Welcome to my review of Dangerous Golf for the Xbox One. And I played this on Series X. It took me around 6 hours and 13 minutes to beat. And basically the way the game works is you have 10 tours. So once you complete all 10 tours, you get a very short ending screen. And you can consider the game completed. So, yeah, you get a decent length little game for, but, you know, like I said, um, you know, it's a little bit over six hours. It can take longer depending on how long some of the courses take you. Some of the courses are a little tricky, and, you know, it's not always clear exactly how to get the most points. But um, what this basically is, this game is also on different platforms. I think it's probably on PC and other platforms, too, but I just played it on Xbox One through the Series X. I actually got a bundle that had all four or five of the games made by this company. Dangerous Driving, Danger Zone 1 and 2, and, and this game. Um, and it was like 40 bucks for the whole package. It was a nice little package. Um, it's, it's a good way to buy these games. If you're interested in these games, I'd probably recommend going with the package over buying them individually because they can be a little expensive individually. So check out the package um, on Xbox One on the Xbox Store. Check it out. Um, there's probably deals on Steam and shit like that, too, I would imagine. Um, but it's it's a pack that has all four or five games in it. So the way this game works is it's kind of like Crash Zone in Burnout 3. But it's actually a lot more fleshed out because now you're using a golf ball, which is a lot more mobile than, you know, a trover, a vehicle carcass for extra points and busting the shit. Now you're, you're, you're hitting, you know, precise golf shots and bouncing, trying to bank, you know, do bank shots, slow motion. Um, and you have your smash breaker with, uh, the way the smash breaker works, if you destroy a certain amount of objects, you activate your smash breaker. And usually on most holes, you get one smash breaker, which you'll activate when you hit a certain amount of items. So you always want to get that smash breaker most of the time. And um, then once you hit the smash breaker, it allows your ball to go on fire and bounce it around, and you can hit all these objects and get rack up more points. Once you've, once your sm your smash breaker bar, once it wears out, it's it's on a timer. Once that flame goes down, your smash breaker is done. Then your ball will just fall to the ground. Now you can always end the smash breaker early and drop your ball to the ground for a final putt if you want to do it. You have options like that. There's a lot of little strategies to it. Um, now you have courses at the end of each tour you have courses like this where you have to just land try to land all the holes and basically you got to try to get the the ball in all the holes but you don't have to do all of them you'll get a bronze medal if you don't get you know if you don't get them all um, and let, you know now if you don't get enough of them you won't even get a bronze medal you have to at least get a bronze medal for the next course what I like about the game is there's no hidden bullshit like um, okay now you don't have enough medals to progress to the ne to the, to the next uh, tour. You know, as long as you're getting bronze, it will unlock the next event and you'll move at a steady clip. So you don't have to worry about getting gold on everything or anything like that. That's all optional if you want to do that. But it does give a replay value if you're interested in scoring. You could try to get some crazy ass scores and shit like that, which is cool. For me, this was just a quick kill, just something to, uh, to bust through. And, you know, I enjoyed the ride while it lasted. But I, I wouldn't go back and redo this because I'm just not really that interested in that. But, um... The game is actually quite good. I was surprised how good it was. It, it's pretty damn addictive. You know, I mean, it's it's not the most precise game out there or anything like that. But, you know, considering that it's kind of evolving the idea of that uh, of that crash mode in Burnout 3, where you know, that originally showed up in Burnout 3, which was, of course, a racing game, but it had a crash mode as an additional mode, which was great. And, um... And, you know, shortly in my next review, I'm going to show Danger, um, what is it, Danger Zone 1 and 2. Those are the, those are crash mode games that are based, like, purely on the Burnout 3 formula. But they actually, they actually, they, they keep it, but they add things to it, which is very cool. And I'm going to get into that in those reviews. But this is actually using a golf ball, which is pretty clever, because it gives you a lot more precise movement, like I said, than just trying to maneuver a, a vehicle carcass on the track, you know. Um, because those are big and bulky, and, and, you know, in those games, you just don't have real precise movement of where the vehicle jumps around to. So, this gives you much better control. Now, there's a lot of different things in this game, like, um, you can press A if you're above a, um, a mop bucket, and you'll drop into the mop bucket if you time it right, and then you hit B, and the analog stick in the direction to launch the ball yet again and get another smash breaker. Now, you can chain these smash breakers by going to the next mop bucket, dropping into that one there's also money flags and things that appear on the course as you destroy more shit 
you rack up more points and then flags will pop up. Now, if the money flags pop up, you can try to go for the money flag shops. The, the, the money flag may give you 50,000 points if you land a shot. If it's a gold money flag, there's different ones with different point values. But if you do land a, a money flag, you get, an, you, get a, you get another shot. So you're able to shoot the ball again. So there's a very nice pacing to it to where you can try to chain things to get more shots with your ball and rack up more points. That's the simple way to explain it without going into all the little nuances. Because, you know, even I didn't memorize every little nuance of the game. But um, that's the idea, is that you're trying to destroy shit. And if you hold down X at the beginning of a match, there's these little, it's called hint. And if you, if you hold X, it will highlight objects that are worth the most value, usually, or that you're trying to target. Occasionally, you will have, and those are the ones you want to hit, because those are going to give you the most points, usually. There's also, and some tracks will have hazards. There's certain times when you want to avoid hitting a certain item, or you instantly will lose the, the match. Now, another thing to the game is, the idea of the game is, to get in a little bit more detail, is you start off by just hitting the ball. And you're only allowed to hit the ball once. So, the way to get your second hit and to keep the ball going is to get your smash breaker. So, after you hit the ball once, you're trying to hit it in such a way that you destroy enough objects to where your smash breaker activates. It's a certain number of objects in each course. It varies um, on each course. There's also a certain amount of money you need to rack up in damages to get the different metals, like bronze, silver, gold, and and pink. But there's these different number values. But the smash breaker, you you want to knock, you want to bust up enough objects to get your smash breaker. Then that gives you another chance to fuck around with the ball. So now you you use your, you press B to, to to launch into your smash breaker, and then you can kind of bounce the ball around the course. Now holding the left trigger will make it do a lower bounce that you can control. You also can use slow motion to try to hit things more accurately. I actually almost never used slow motion. I didn't even realize it was in the game, and I think I used it a few times, but um, you don't need to use it, but it's probably helpful to use. But you have a lot of different features like that. And after you use your smash breaker, and that bar burns out for the smash breaker, then your ball's going to fall to the ground again. As I said, you can end that prematurely and, and if you want, but usually you want to wear that out and get as much damage as possible while in smash breaker mode, where you're bouncing your ball on fire and destroying shit. As you're doing that, you may open up money flags. And with money flags, if you shoot, if you decide to take a shot and shoot into the money flag, you're gonna and you land the hit, you get another another um, chance to hit the ball again. So by chaining money flags, you can get additional um, opportunities to hit the ball again, basically. And um, aside from that, like I said, you can land in the mop buckets and things like that. There's also um, because the mop bucket will allow you to launch the ball again as well for a shorter smash breaker. Um, there's also certain courses where there's something like where you you hit the ball and it gets glued to the wall and you set off these time bombs. So you get a certain amount of glue uses and bomb uses. And you can kind of just bust around the course that way. Some tracks also have warps. And as you get farther into the game, the tracks do get more and more complex, which is very cool. Like there's multi-stories, there's hidden rooms and things. And sometimes it's pretty clever. Like, sometimes the door won't open unless you meet certain objectives. It can be kind of clever. Sometimes it's a little too obscure. I did have to look up some stuff on, on my tablet because I wasn't sure exactly what, what, how to fuck to reveal the, the, the flag. Because to finish a course, you need to put the ball into the main flag of the course. And holding down Y will usually show where that flag is, but not if it's hidden initially. Sometimes you have to reveal it by scoring points. So that's basically the meat of the game. You know, just a quick overview. That's pretty much how it works. And overall, I thought it was quite good. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's quite a good game. I wouldn't say it's great, but I think it's quite good. It was entertaining while it lasted. I had fun with it. But it doesn't offer me a ton of replay. But if you're in the high scores, it may be fun. But I don't see it uh, being the most precise, deepest kind of game out there, even for replayability. But I'm sure there's players that do enjoy it. And like I said, I had a lot of fun with it while it lasted. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for, thanks for watching.